welcome to this podcast. This week we've got Dan Wildball from Sticky. Dan, welcome. Hello. Right, so if we chat about the Reflection series, obviously it's yep. just recently been released and from speaking to you um, off mic, it's been a bit of a success. So talk us a bit about that sort of from start to finish because I know it's a huge, huge mm. process. Yeah, so, uh, well, I've been at Sticky for six years now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, at the time... Tom, who runs the company, since day one has always said we want to have a a big free film with nice carp and no products, and it it sounded great. But the problem we had was at the start we didn't have the amount of anglers that we needed. I thought to create something like that. I wasn't experienced with filming, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's probably what would have been four years down the line. We had a bit of a dabble at filming, did the odd sort of SLR film with people uh, and then you know we thought with the size of the company and the way it was going we needed it was time to to try and do that and we knew we needed help so um, yeah Rich Stewart was uh, became available and um, we sort of spoke to him and said look would you like to do some work for us and it was at that point then that with Rich's knowledge and skill with the the filming side of it we were actually able to do it um, and then it was just a case of planning out what we could do so it was picking the anglers picking the venues and it, we didn't want to do it on places that had necessarily been done before no. um, so we wanted to do it on uh, we kind of wanted to try and appeal to as many people as possible because everyone does different fishing, don't they? And, yeah. You know, some to some people, day ticket lakes is not relatable, not of any interest. But to others, that's all they're fishing. So, we wanted to try and appeal to everybody. Um, so yeah, we came up with uh, a list of people that were up for doing it. Um, list of venues. They were quite. It was difficult because to go somewhere that someone hasn't been is hard. Yeah. To go somewhere that someone hasn't been with amazing carp. Is going to be hard in terms of catching them. So, um, yeah, we picked Cassian. Um, we've been there a lot before, but it's very unpredictable with the water levels and how busy it's going to be. Um, and because we, were, we had so much on, we, we didn't end up going till December or right. end of November, December. Correct. So <laughs> it was like we had like four days to do it. So it was a bit. Yeah. I was hopeful and I was because Tom, who runs Stick, he's like a master of Cassian. I've never mm. seen anything like it. Of all the people I've been out with over the years, various lakes and that man on that lake is ridiculous you right. can turn up you look at the weather the water level and go they're there right and you go there and they are <laughs> it, I've no, it's ridiculous yeah so we, we 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 were on the fish but it they weren't active the water was really low which can often make it hard but yeah but so we did that one we did a we put when we wanted, we wanted a day ticket lake to appeal to everybody mm -hmm. um and nothing had been done on Christchurch, right? Which is, I can see why because you know if you've got a film crew going to a lake, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to have a dead cert, you know. You 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 want to ideally know in your head that you're going to come away with a film, mm -hmm. but you don't know that on Christchurch yeah. because it can, you know, you can catch ten, fifteen fish, but you could quite easily blank. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to do Christchurch mainly as well because for the first. Certainly, four years of old when I was at Sticky, we used this as like I lived in Oxford basically. Mm -hmm. It was just all of our lads were fishing it. I'd photograph pretty much all the carp from all the lakes and linear as well. Yeah. Um, so, you wanted to do it on Christchurch, but not something that's predictable. You know, the obvious one was we do it at Scott and Baz. Mm -hmm. They've caught loads from the lake, um, but we we wanted to make it different, so we picked Oz and Ben. Mm -hmm. Don't fish day tickets generally, they fish syndicates for the hardest fish in the country so yeah. it was out of their comfort zone and um yeah uh it ended up going really well what else did we do um managed to get marcus and gareth on a lake that i've got a ticket on right um which is a nice place not massive but like shallow nice weedy nice carp um a big one was was martin um martin's martin's been making films for years now and he's fishing for everything yeah He's always trying to think of something that will raise, you know, be different, you know, shoot for the stars, he says. But um, so he's like, I oh, don't want to see bite alarms. Everyone does bite alarms. Let's do a float. 
which sounds all romantic, but to shoot is horrendous. Yeah, I bet. Because you've got <laughs> you've got you've got two camera it, one's on a wide, one's on the float. Yeah. So look my camera's got a cache so you can keep it so you leave it, it's not recording. And if something happens, you press record, it'll keep the last seven seconds. Right. So you okay. haven't got to sit there record and record and record. Yeah. But what it means is you either looking at that float or you're looking at the camera back and forth, back and forth, then you've got to check your battery. And it ended up actually being um when he caught the car up on the float, yeah. my battery died, <laughs> which is why there's no wide. Right. So I've gone, after however many attempts at doing this, because the fish were being really moody, yeah. you know, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, God's sake, like, this is ridiculous now. Like, I'm getting so frustrated. Um, and it's just started beeping at me. I'm like, oh, I need another battery. So I've gone back to the van, grabbed another battery. As I walk back down, I hear this like splashing. Huh. And Martin's netting it, and I thought, oh, I've missed it. <laughs> and, he, and if you actually look at it, he's looked round as if to like go out to the camera, like cheer to the camera, yeah. and I'm not there. So then he sort of panicked and just like looked at Rich and gone, yay, like, <laughs> which is a nightmare. So it, 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 yeah, it was all a bit, um, um, it was the float fishing stuff is the hardest. Yeah. And then I can't, what was it? What was the fifth one? Um, so I'd imagine as well watching the float with the water and everything and yeah. the reflection and the I, light conditions yeah, yeah. constantly. Yeah, and, and the ripple. And, yeah, and you, you, then you've got to make you know the clouds go over. You've got to yeah. expose it, so you can't yeah. just sort of like you know, scroll through Instagram yeah. and wait for it to rip off. You, yeah. You've literally got to look at the float, look at the, make sure it's exposed. Or oh, the sun's come out, make sure it's exposed. <laughs> or you know, there's there's so much to. Or that they might the float might wave, so you keep that. Yeah. Or there might be a you know something happens, so you got to get that. Mm -hmm. You might see one cruising through, and you think, oh, should I? Do a risk panning and getting that, or no, no, I've got to stick to the. So yeah, it's um, the float fishing stuff was the hardest, and the on the second, or the most recent one with Chris and Martin, that was well, it's by far the hardest shoot mm -hmm. I've ever been on. It yeah. was great fun, but we was in this little wooded valley full of ticks. Oh. Um, no phone signal, so if something happened, we couldn't like text each other and say, look, something's going mm -hmm. on over here. So. You know, if 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 Chris or Martin found bubblers, mm -hmm. we'd want the scene of them both there. And yeah. but Rich is off with Martin, I'm off with Chris. Yeah. There's no way of us communicating. The carp, when Martin said they're so spooky, I thought, no, don't be daft. Like, they'll be fine. You you only had to like creak a branch, right. and they were gone. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So I'm stood there, just rolling on Chris, um, with his little prawn out. <laughs> <laughs> and his float waving, and it's like you know you, you're sat there for hours. I mean, I've never seen patients like it. When you crouch, and you get pins and needles after yeah. like a minute, don't you? Yeah. Two hours. He'll be crouched on his knees for two hours without moving, without saying a word, without having a drink, nothing. He yeah. just sits there like a heron. It is unbelievable. <laughs> and um, you know, I'm just thinking, God, no, they're over there. We need to move over there, but. You, I'm not telling him how to like fish. Yeah. Fight. You know, he he knows exactly what he's doing. He sat there and he's like, they, they'll be back, they'll be back. And he's sort of waiting, you're waiting. And there was a moment when it actually happened and the fish, you know, he, he got a bite and he couldn't catch up with it with his centre pin and it got in the tree and he was like, oh, I think I might have lost this one. And after all them hours of waiting and waiting and we'd, we'd finish, the, the day had finished, we'd film the, um, the end of day stuff and then we'd walk back up this hill, which was a great big hill, Sleeping in the, up in the vans, and there was hornets everywhere. It was, oh. it it was an amazing location, and to film a Chris was incredible. But that was the hardest shoot by. And normally, it, it, it'd be quite easy to go right. Let's go to somewhere where we know that someone, a certain person, would get loads of bites. Mm -hmm. In the morning, you wake up, you film on the bites, fizz in the. Yeah. But it's 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 almost too easy and. Been done, hasn't it? It's been done, yeah, and, and and people obviously enjoy it, but I think to get to try and get that extra like wow factor, you've got to try. I mean, we've been really lucky so far. Last year, Nick's film would have been nice anyway because of the location, the yeah. carp he caught. I think Nick's great on camera anyway; he's very entertaining. And but when he caught that fish, it was like. Yeah, the moment was. <laughs> yeah, well like I was, I was, I was actually filming. I was in Cambridge at the time, and um, right. he ran me at like three in the morning. He's like, "I've got him." <laughs> I was like, "What? <laughs> I've got him." I was sleeping in my van at the time. I didn't know what time it was. Didn't have a clue. And I was like, 
oh, hang on a second, I've looked and it's like, oh, it's Nick. What, what? You've got, <laughs> that it can only be one fish. Yeah. So I've literally just like text, I was saying, I'm gone, mate, Nick's. Flew down there and uh, yeah, barrowed my gear down to where he had it and that. And yeah, it was, um, <laughs> it was, there's, there's only, there's, there's been, fr I've photographed a lot of carp now, there's three carp now that have given me like goosebumps. Yeah. The croc. Yeah. That one. And the bird feel common. Yeah. And all of them were just like, wow. Yeah. Like, obviously a lot of fish go, oh, he's really nice. He's, he's nice. But them three fish were just yeah. like another level. And I think that was captured so well in the film. And you, again, you said off mic, the amount of... Oh, the yeah, he's texted me and said, I'm never doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you're a punisher, mate. Yeah, no, he, he's, he loves it a lot. He, he's, because Nick's obviously was a big name, big figure in car yeah. for many years. And he's sort of, took a back step for a bit, mm. does his own fishing. He's his own man, and I think that's what's great. He is his own man. He doesn't... Um, he won't conform to what he should do, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you, you're fishing on whatever lake. Did you catch the big one? No, but I had a nice time. Yeah. That, yeah. That's his attitude, and yeah. his attitude is like, he'll drive to the south of France, get to a 10,000-acre lake, arrive, and there'll be one bivy on there. He'll go, nah. Yeah doesn't want to see like, I think he says in the film he's like I've had 30 years of watching people yeah. in green domes picking bogeys out <laughs> he's, he's, he, is, he is entertaining but yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's great because like I say he's his own man he does his own thing and that fish normally like he likes fishing for nice looking fish he's never yeah. been like a bounty hunter but I remember when he started fishing for that one he said he was going to fish for it and when he caught it like yeah like, he was, you can see it in the film he's crying you know yeah. it, was, it, it meant so I think he had a lot of personal stuff going on as well yeah. which you know you never hear or see because he's such a confident yeah. Um, yeah. person but yeah the feedback he's had and we've had from it a lot of people saying that you know they've given up fishing they want to they started again we had a uh, I see on Facebook uh, one, of our, one of the lads uh, watched the film went straight down the lake and caught the big one because he was inspired to, it made him want to go and catch it. I, I, I had a lot of friends that you know, work for other companies and things, and they're just saying like that. That, that is the yeah. their favourite one. And we were very fortunate because, like I say, great location, great carp. Nick's great on camera, and you know, a bit of carp fishing history really. A fifty yeah. pounder from the Thames. It was um, yeah. and a great looking I was fish. Say, as well. a hell like, of a fish when it wasn't like yeah, it was it's a not pale. just a lake escapee yeah. that's just been thrown in. Like it was. Yeah. It, a lot of people have known about it for a while, but. Mm. You know, it was never out there as such. Um, and yeah, we've had a, one or two people saying, oh, it's, I think one person said, oh, that fish is going to die now. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 yes, it's probably, it may well get busier. We didn't name the the particular stretch or anything. There was a couple yeah. of shots that if you knew the area, you might know where it is. But, yeah. you know, anyone that wanted to go and fish for that fish, if they haven't got a boat, well, I'd say it's fair play. Yeah, because just lugging camera kit down there, yeah, pff, like it's hassle. Yeah, I bet. you know, you, it's a lot of a lot of hard work. Even with a boat, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, and anyone that wants to, you know, it's like the Burfield Common. You know, the, that fish is out there. You know, everyone knows where it is. Yeah, the the ch it's a hard fish to catch. You know, it's just it doesn't mean it's gonna no. all of a sudden get leads thrown at its head every five yeah, seconds you know it's just the ball breaking water yeah a lot of people will say yeah I'm going to get a boat I'm going to go and great do it mm. you know do it like I do. another we've not had much negativity but a couple there was another one about um, oh they've already sold another I don't know 100 club tickets mm. that's really a good thing like yeah. clubs are on their yeah. arse you know like yeah. a lot of clubs you know 40, 50 quid a year tickets yeah. and then the next, then they say, oh yeah, well they're gonna get smashed by otters, but we can't afford to fence it. Well, yeah. the more members you've yeah, got, exactly. the more chance you've got of being able to protect these fish. Not only that, you think you know they sell all those memberships. Not everybody's gonna go fishing at the same time. It's like a gym membership, isn't it? Someone will probably get it and might only go two weekends yeah, a year. Yeah, like oh no, oh no, one of the one of the lakes is like very cheap, very very cheap, and it's four thousand membership. Yeah, I've been over there four or five times, and I'll be the only one there. Yeah. You know, it's there's, yeah. There's, it, I understand people want to keep certain lakes quiet, which is why we don't name them. Yeah. You know, if 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 we do fish somewhere a little bit more sensitive, then we won't name them out of respect. But if people want to go to the effort to find out, you know how easy it is now. Yeah. If you 
you might you know if you see a fish on instagram yeah. you only got a screenshot it sent it to a handful of mates and yeah you know exactly where it yeah, is yeah, yeah. So a fish picture yeah or something in the background that you yeah like you can i mean you can i get sent pictures all the time where's yeah. this from where's this from yeah you you know where everything's yeah from you getting, can't not can you now with no, social and, media and you know it's a it's a good i've got friends that have got no publicity lakes and but to yeah. me, I think that's more risky yeah. than actually getting them out there because a lot of the fishing that's advertised now is if you've got a rod and you see water, fish for it. Yeah. But if that lake's known to be yeah. whatever syndicate, yeah. you wouldn't do it. If that's just a bit of water, go for it. You yeah. Know? Um, but yeah, as a whole, went off a bit there, but that's fine. if we, uh, yeah, as a whole, it's, it's gone down. Yeah, it's gone down better than I thought yeah. it would. I really enjoyed um, Ozzy's one on this yeah. one. Those shots of him in the water yeah. with the waves. Stunning. Ozzy's a carpy man. I, yeah. I was, there's some people that <laughs> yeah. you can just... <sighs> I could listen to Oz, I yeah, think, like, for, I... for ages as well. He's just got a way of... Yeah, I watched it... him do a slideshow at um, the Brentwood show, yeah. and he's just got a way of captivating. And... He, he loves it. He, but he doesn't just love the... Putting the net under him, he loves everything. But people yeah. say, "Oh, I love the, the nature." And that. Well, a lot of people that. don't, you know, don't. Yeah. Pay. He literally loves being outside. I mean, I, yeah. I don't. In the winter, he's out every week. Yeah, I can't think of anything worse. Yeah, but he, he's like, he's not doing it to be cool. Yeah. He's doing it because he genuinely loves being out there. Yeah, um, he's one. Of, he's, he's. I'd say he's one of the most passionate yeah. anglers I know. It shows, and, doesn't it? You know, ferry. I mean, when we when we were, I mean, I was going over there so much because it's such a a great place, and it was a m mammoth task to catch one. Yeah. You know, when you look at it all, and yeah. with the flood water coming through, and not hundred percent knowing what was in there, you know, he, he watches. Yeah, isn't I mean, it? Yeah. even if you knew there was X amount of carbon, yeah. it's hard. But yeah. the fact that when it flipped, when it came through, and you got you know anglers like himself and and so you know, oh, I won't name. It's not my place to say, but there's yeah. It's, Guys that have caught, you know, you, the f most historic carp in the country are over there. They know what they're doing, and yeah. there was like a handful of sightings. Yeah, you know, it was, and but he was still there every week. He was there every week, every week, you know. And he, he'd turn up, he'd spend five hours raking weed out just to get his rods in yeah. to a bit of water where he doesn't know if there's a carp. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, but in his head, he was like, that was what it was all about, you know. Yeah. He, he could have, he could have had a bite from a fifty-pound carp. But he, but he that he, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Well, there's few people I know that could. But yeah, yeah Ozzy's it's interesting because when I I try and if someone says oh, I don't really like the reflections, I always say like, what was your favourite out of interest? Yeah, such a variety. You know, the first year, most people that I speak to said Miles. Yeah, but the figures show that he was the least viewed. Right. Same with this year, ish. Yeah. yeah most people I speak to go. Oh, Obviously, other people say Nick's, they really like Tozzies. Yeah. And it's a lot slower paced, a lot more big fish orientated. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the kind of, it just depends on the people you speak to, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Aussie's, Aussie's cool. He's, like I say, one of them people that has like, endless shots, even his rods, you know. He's like, yeah. widespreads, Neville's, it's cool. Like, he's yeah. cool, isn't he? He's yeah. got to have them in the water as well. Yeah. It, just, it just looks good. <laughs> Some people like myself, Tom Maker, it was. <laughs> he's never going to look cool, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Oz is a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much, obviously, because I know so, so much goes on in the production. I mean, mm. how many hours did, oh. of filming do you have to sift through then just to do all the edit? I mean, it's, that must be relentless when you've got so much decent yeah. content to choose. You got to chop it. Yeah, you got to be ruthless. I mean, some of them you can make three hours, but they're mm. not. People are going to get. It's, it's not. It's got to be. It's got to be fast paced, but there's got to be enough meet in there for yeah. people you know ideally you'd like every one of them to be an hour but realistically yeah. like Mitch's was never going to be an hour it would be boring yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah condensing it I, I don't actually edit We it, the first year Rich did all the editing right this year Rich did three Steve did two okay um, but yeah the editing is massive yeah. and I mean there is actually <laughs> there is actually a boo boo from this year I I came back from we were filming Gaz and Marcus in Germany last spring yeah, uh, for 11 days and we shot 3.8 terabytes of data. <laughs> so there was a lot. Drone, 
three yeah. different cameras, go everything, um, and it filled everything. Right. So I got as soon as I got home, went straight to Curry's, got an eight terabyte hard drive, yeah. took it home. I pressed eject on my current Seagate hard drive, yeah. but it didn't eject. Plugged this new one into format it, oh. and I formatted my old one. Oh no! Every bit of data went oh. gone. The whole lot was wiped. And I, I looked at it and I thought, I've just no, I couldn't have done that. That's impossible. Yeah. That to me, like that wouldn't happen. And then to you it. get that sick feeling. And then it, I looked at it and I thought, oh my god! So <laughs> I ran a recovery on Seagate straight away. It came up with like 1.6 million photos and a few like phone videos. I thought, no. No, oh, no, I need it. I need MXF files. Where are they? And rang them. No, nothing. Then I gave it to um, uh, the team. Team Now, I think it is at right, yeah. uh, Curry's, uh, and they were really rubbish. And had it for like three months. And I was like, "What's going on?" And they're like, "Oh no, we still haven't had time to do it yet." I'm like, I'm, "No, I've paid up like five hundred quid for this." So I oh, said, yeah. "Send it back. I'm, I'm bored now." So I took it to someone else, and we managed to. Over the last year, we've managed to recover. 95% of it. <laughs> but, so at the minute with Gaz and Marcus's section, we've got 51 minutes down on the timeline. Right. Um, we've probably got 20 minutes left. Right. But we're missing like a few wides and a few key chats, yeah. which I've got a friend who says he, he can do it. So mm -hmm. the plan is, it's nearly there. <laughs> Once it's done, um, yeah, we're going to release it as like a summer... Reflection special oh, with Gaza Marcus. They yeah. go to like Holland, Germany, Belgium. Um, it's a pain in the arse. That was one of like the. It's one of the best things we've shot. Like yeah. for looks wise, we've got yeah. like thunderstorms and oh, it, wow. it looked really cool. But yeah, but yeah, da data is a nightmare. Data disaster, I think they call it. Yeah. And I'm always petrified. I have to yeah. download it, that's check it, it. Yeah, check it's there again. Then I then I back it up on something else. Then I take it to the guys in the office. Yeah, and it's. It's horrible. I hate it because <laughs> it's so big. You know, it's not like a few yeah. JPEGs you flick through. Yeah, yeah. This is like you know, gigabytes and hours gigabytes and of footage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, editing takes ages. That's like, that's the hardest thing because yeah, it mm. takes. I mean, something like Nick's. I mean, we had two years of footage. <laughs> so, Rich has got to go through all of that. Make sure it's all in order. Yeah. Um, make sure that yeah, it's it, it's a. Ball lake. Yeah. Um <laughs> thankfully I haven't got to do that, but yeah. yeah, the 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 editing time takes a long time. Which is why I think I know a lot of people want these big like big hours, two hour mm. long films and things, but it just takes so long. Yeah. You know, it is good now because a lot of companies are putting out I think where Corda have sort of set the bar with sort of filming standards, yeah, if you like. Everyone's had to raise that bar. Yeah. So now there's loads of content for Everybody, you know, and and, yeah. and for any sort of fishing you like, there, there's kind of something there for you. But I, there's the, I think before reflections, there wasn't so much big carp. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was, yeah. There was, I think, if you're into that, if you're tapped into that big carp scene. Yeah. Um, there's there, there is not a great deal you would perhaps watch. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we're trying to trying to tap into that. Audience, which is hard because a yeah. lot of them are very like, yeah. you know, yeah, or hush, hush, or... but yeah, thankfully, yeah. a lot of them have actually complimented this one yeah. and said that they actually enjoyed it, which is right, so, a, which is good. Speaking on the big fish one, so did you get you obviously got down and did Mitch's picks with a croc? Yes, well, you? yeah, I uh, where was I? I was in bed <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think I just got back off holiday, yeah, um, and yeah, he rang me and was like. I mean, Mitch's enthusiasm is just ridiculous. Yeah, I know Mitch. Well, I'm he, from around there. I live yeah. about 12, 15 minutes from that lake. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I fish, I've had a few from there. Yeah, I've yeah. fished it. Cool uh, lake, yeah, really cool. And yeah. He, he, he's, he's taught, I mean, I hadn't even seen Mitch the photographed my first one, actually. Oh, really? Think about when he works yeah. as a park range or whatever. He yeah, was on yeah. his stand-up paddleboard. Yeah. He's like, you got one dog? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, whoosh, whoosh, yeah. going over. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's he Mitch's quality. Like I've, yeah. I'm sort, of, you know, I, I I spend time with Mitch outside of work yeah. and fishing as well because yeah. I, I, he's hilarious. Yeah. And he's yeah, and yeah, he rang me. He was like, "Danny boy, I've got it." I was like, well, I'm like half asleep." <laughs> and he's like, "Got it." And I'm like, oh, let, let me, I'll, I'll, I'm on my way, and I'm sort of whenever it happens, I sort of wake up, go for a pee, make a coffee, get dressed, 
should be camera gear in the, it's normally in the van anyway get, yeah. get in the van as I get on the road I'm like right what's he then it dawns me what he's got then I yeah. ring him I'm like wicked yeah well done so yeah. they, they know that I'm not like yeah. wicked mate buzzing first thing so yeah. Like, yeah. Um, he's like what was it the other day uh, yeah Scott had a really nice one yeah it was like 10 past 3 it's the first time I've seen my girlfriend like 10 days yeah so, and I was like <laughs> Uh, she's like, "What's that noise?" I'm like, "Someone's caught one." <laughs> it's dark. It's like it should be. It should be it's night. It's like five in the morning, which means yeah. someone's caught one. And um, yeah, I woke up seeing it. And as soon as I see his name, I knew exactly what fish it was. Yeah. And I was like, "I'm on my way." Yeah. So yeah. Um, but like doing doing all them on call things yeah. allows us to get footage of. That's what you have to do. Yeah. Fish. If you want, yeah. If you want to um, be that step ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was weird. I um, I messaged Mitch randomly out of the blue, just to see how I was getting on. He's yeah, like, it's in the net. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, really odd on yeah. Facebook Messenger. <laughs> I'm surprised you hear him from him. home. Yeah, of all the times to message, <laughs> was how you getting on there? He's like, it's in the net, Donald. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he reckons he literally just got in the net and was just shouting it. Yeah. And awesome. he's not quiet, and there was yeah. people like fishing like two miles away. It was like, what was that noise? And they came over, yeah. and it was Mitch just going crazy. <laughs> like, he yeah, sends me all these fish, crazy WhatsApp videos, and he's like, you know, yeah. he's on the way to the lake. He's like, get out of there. He does this. <laughs> and obviously, the the best Instagram page going now, always have a T boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. <laughs> he's a character, and that's one thing like in like doing this when you're doing like, filming and stuff. Yeah. I think filming. You could film anyone, but it's much better to film with a character. Yeah, you know, like they yeah. they, they, they make it effortless. Yeah, it's like they? it's like a football interview. In you know, if after the game, if Wayne Rooney comes on, you're just like, oh, well. yeah, yeah. If Zlatan comes on, you're like, oh, this is a, yeah. what could he say? You know, yeah. and I think that that interesting <laughs> character is what, yeah, you know, people want to see. Like Nick, 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 Nick for me is like one of like we're, we're really lucky. It's because we've got a lot of good people on camera. You know, we yeah. can just literally roll the camera and go. Yeah, they go. do your job for you. Yeah, you, ha you haven't got to give many lines. Yeah. You, know, you literally just say go for it. It's like what we're talking about, and you're just like, well, just talk about something, and then they just go yeah. boom. Yeah. You know, Penny, Nick, um, Bowler. You know, they're all they're all been doing it for years, and they're yeah. so good at just delivering. Yeah, and the, and like Adams, like Penning's unbelievable in the way that you know he'll he'll see what shots you've got yeah like the other day we were we were, we were um filming and i was filming carp sort of like in the mayfluff just sort of like you know the dorsals coming out yeah. and all sorts yeah. of he talked about then it was like a reflective thing on his time on this lake and he was talking about it and he was getting in all the shots that i'd talk, spoken about he was talking about you know oh yeah i turned up and i seen him in the mayfluff yeah he, he, he's so good yeah. at yeah. doing that he, you know he <laughs> He doesn't. He gives you a good in and a good out. He doesn't yeah. um, like stutter or stall. He's just. He's been doing it for yeah, just the natural. Years, yeah, some people can just do it, can't they? Yeah, yeah. Like some people are natural on camera. And some people, yeah. I think, I I hate it. I, I, you know, I always say to people, oh, I do this, do that, but I couldn't do. It. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. It, it's hard. It's really hard. But the people that give that ten percent extra than what their normal mm. self is comes across better yeah. it's like always you know if you if you're shy and you're worried about what people are going to think about you you come across awkward and yeah. on camera and people whereas if you're over the top it actually you feel like an idiot but it, you'd come across better and it seems normal because that's what you'd expect it, like you say it would stand out a lot more if someone was just quiet giving one word answers yeah looking really awkward yeah, and sheepish. Like, yeah. You yeah feel like, if, if the viewer's uncomfortable yeah, feel, yeah I was just going to say I make the viewer feel yeah. awkward but if someone's full on over the top even loud it's yeah. what you'd expect. Yeah, it's like you know. you know, like Alan Blair. Like he could be a Blue Peter presenter. You know, he's yeah. incredible. He can just deliver bang bang enthusiasm, yeah. and it you feel like you're mates of him. Yeah, and have being able to do that is is it's, it's a skill. Yeah, you know, it, that happens over time. I'd never be able to do it, but some people are natural at it. Some people develop that. Yeah, um, yeah. Look, luckily, luckily for us, we've got a lot of people that I think could be that in a few years' time. Mm. Are getting there, and then we've got other people that are kind of the full package, you know, as a consultant. They yeah. can write, they can take a photo, they're strong on social media, they're great in camera, yeah. you know, the, yeah, yeah, the full package, if you like. Yeah, brilliant. What, in terms of, obviously, I'd imagine your days are pretty varied, obviously, when you're not getting up at stupid o'clock to do fish shots. Yeah. What's a typical day for you? Oof, it literally all depends. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of my own boss in the sense that I get left alone, yeah. To promote 
sticky and now thinking so I it's like I don't get an, I'm not under any pressure mm -hmm. you know what how is you doing it's just that's your baby yeah. go get it out there yeah. so at the start it was sort of social media and uh, magazine work now it's everything right so it's yeah so I have to submit stuff to all the magazines yeah. um and the way the magazines work now, the more stuff you can send them that is interesting to them, the more you get in. So, yeah. does that include like product photography and everything as well? Would you do all of that? I, I do the on the bank stuff. I hate studio photography. Right. Just made him. Yeah. But yeah, all the uh, the on the bank stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But we we don't we don't really do too much of it. But I so I'd, I'd I'd know I'd say I've got I don't know I've got three total cart features to shoot. Yeah. A cart world, a few car apologies, a couple of cart feeds, and improve your course. Um, Right, I've got them to do. Right, who can I do them with? Yeah. What who whose fishing would suit that? Um, what topic can we do it on? So I'll, I don't know. Say like this morning I've done one with with Scott for cart feed on essentials because mm -hmm. of his essentials thing. Hashtag, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's like his essentials for fishing. Yeah. Um, so I do like you know I'll sit down with him and say what well, what's your essentials? Uh, this 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 this. So like ten eleven things. Yeah. I'll take a picture of them 11 things in different ways um then some of the guys will go i'll write it mm -hmm. some of the guys will say we'll dictaphone it so i'll sit there yeah they tell me what they want to say i write it down for them because mm -hmm. it doesn't take me long to type things up whereas with them yeah my my, my job is to sort of like look after the anglers and extract content yeah. from them right. and make make their life as easy as possible so my life gets harder but theirs gets easier yeah so like miles for example if I didn't go out of miles, no one would see miles. Yeah, he doesn't. He's not interested. Yeah, he always says, "I'm fishing these days. Come and do what you want." Yeah, but he won't send an article or. Yeah, his fishing is his, his his life almost. He, them few days he goes. Yeah, he's like tunnel. You know, he, he that's what he. If I yeah. want to come down and do stuff with him, I went out of him yesterday. I got there at seven o'clock in the morning. and I couldn't take a photo or do any words until midday. Right. Because he's looking for spots and yeah, he's, but he's that's his priority. Yeah. But yeah, so my job is to try and uh, get sticky baits out there, basically yeah. as much as possible. Um, and now thinking anglers as well, just yeah. try and get it out there as um, for getting out. Like we we went went for a big well for the last six years now we've just been adding anglers. Yeah, um, yeah it's impressive. Line up, isn't it? Mm. You've got you the more know. anglers we've got, the more because I think if if we just said right, we just want two anglers to do it all. Yeah. For the amount of content we want and need to get out there, you just exhaust them. Mm. You know, yeah. like if if I don't know, say Tom Maker for example, if there was a film every month and twenty five features a year from him, yeah, that's you, it. You yeah. end up making things up. So I'd yeah. rather, yeah. Do three strong things with him a year. Yeah. With all these different people we've got, three strong things and you're not overusing them. Yeah, not only that, you've got, like you say, different anglers, you know, with their different styles like Big Fish or Big yeah, Hits or Dave yeah. Tiffier or Syndica. And that was the bit, yeah, when I started at Sticky, like, Tom was very much um, uh, big carp, so the places he fished was raised before it, it changed, right. Pinge and Dog. Yeah. And he, that was him and when I went there, it was all about big black carp. Yeah. Nothing else mattered. Yeah. And I, I tried to get in that there's a lot more than just that. Yeah. If we're going to sell a lot of bait, you, we've yeah. got to appeal to everybody. And yeah. that's why we've added such a mixture. You know, you've got like Tom Maker to Oz, not in a high, you know, it's still, they're still amazing at what they do. There's no yeah, better than the other. It's just completely set, different. It? You know, yeah. like if, if it was a case of putting them both on the same lake to catch Spurfield Common, you'd fancy Oz. But if it was on Brazos, Oz would just sit there going, what the hell, Yeah. this guy's a machine. So it's yeah. different. It's both cart fishing, but totally different. And everybody does different things. There's no right, wrong. It's all personal. Yeah. So if somebody would rather catch 20 fish a day, great. Yeah. We've got to have someone that they can aspire to that does that. You know, like for the guys that fish... On heavily stocked waters that want to catch as many as they can, 
like Tom Maker is phenomenal. He's like a machine. Yeah. You know, like if you if you filmed him like on a you know just sat rolled the camera on him spotting, you'd think you were on repeat. Yeah. Now, he's not an in, you know, he's just literally just a machine doing it. Yeah. Um you know, and some people that like to, oh, catching twenty fish a night sounds like hell to me, but yeah. <laughs> a lot of people enjoy yeah. it. So yeah. it's yeah, you've got to appeal to everybody. Um Yeah. It's um yeah, you can see that it does. It's sort of each aspect there is to carp angling. You can see Sticky have made like a concerted effort. To tick yeah, it off almost. It's, I'll, I'll look at it as, um, if you like Nike for example. Yeah. You know, they don't use John Smith from the pub in their adverts. They mm. use Ronaldo. Mm. All these little kids have got Ronaldo t-shirts. I know fishing's very different, but yeah. in any field of sport or whatever you do, people always aspire to be like Terry, for example. Yeah. People, if Terry didn't use Neville's, you'd hardly see Neville's. Yeah. He is like a he's an icon. He's people people follow that, and that's why I think it's good we've got so many of these guys that you know. If you're an Oxford bite angler, you aspire to be Tom Maker. If you're trying to catch fifty pounders, you might aspire to be oh, so he conducts mm. himself great. Um, you know, if you want to be your own man and just fish wherever you want for nice Nick, all these different people, people really look up to and. With social media, everyone's tangible now. You can message Adam Pennant. You can message, yeah. you know, it's not like, you know, before you just see him on go fish, uh, turtle fishing or whatever, yeah. or in, the Angles or, or or in or a Sandown yeah. show. Yeah. Like now, you can physically message anyone you want, pretty yeah. much. Um, and, you know, if, if someone messages Adam or whoever, you know, they, they'll reply. Yeah. So then, oh, he's a nice fella. He's, yeah. And they then. Look up to them, and yeah, I think that's really important, isn't it? As well, just being on it because that could obviously for the busier guys and more well known guys, mm. like you said about Nick getting 1500 yeah, messages, yeah, that's a full time job, Exa replying yeah, to and not that's... just going, Hi, thanks, spending a minute or two yeah. to each reply. That's a, a few weeks gone, yeah. Oh, theory. yeah, 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 <laughs> like it is, it's difficult because, yeah, because like people. It's really nice of them to send these guys messages, mm. but some people are like, "Oh, you're not replied in two hours." It's like these yeah. guys do have lives as well. Yeah. You know, if you, yeah. if if it was a, I, my phone goes off on a Saturday night or whatever. I'm not, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to read it. You know, yeah. and I don't, I'm not being rude. I just, no, I you just, need your time as well. Yeah, like my head is constantly fishing. Yeah, whether it's not normally my my fish, it is literally we call it plugged into the matrix. It is yeah. non-stop. Yeah. It could be where's this fish from? I've got yeah. one. Who's caught this? Yeah. 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 What are you up to? Are you fishing, Dan? Like, <laughs> that's why. Like, I'll, the only things I really put on my story or something. I'll put my rods out. Yeah. So they know I'm fishing. Then. Yeah. Do you get much time to fish for yourself? I, I get what I. I could fish a lot more. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I think. Um, I could. It's like a, I think that the time thing is difficult because mm. it's like my. I hate. When people moan about, oh, I get no time. He's caught low because he's got time. Yeah, it's like time, it's not a competition. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's the, you know, some people, they don't. It's physically impossible, and I, you know, other people, you know, they, they'll go out for dinner on Friday night. They've got a mm. barbecue Saturday. They go on, go on the drink Saturday, uh, Saturday night. Then they've mm. got to do family things on the Sunday. You know, mm. that's their choice. You know, like yeah. it's yeah. the people that. Do have the time of they they have that time through a sacrifice, but yeah. that means they do a part time job. Yeah. So they have less money agree. to do nice things. Yeah. They have a family. They've had the choice to have a family. You know, like mm -hmm. fair play. Um, you can't. But a lot of the people that have say four nights a week, they haven't got the joys of children. Yeah. That, you, that some people have got that. Mm -hmm. They haven't got the joys of going on a nice holiday. Yeah. They haven't got the joys of going out for a nice meal. Yeah. Big house. Yeah. So, it goes on. Yeah. yeah. Like. Yeah. You know. Some a lot of people say, "I wish I, I wish I could fish full time." I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> it's that. Yeah, I yeah. like having something to look forward to. Yeah, to like, go. I, yeah. The, the, I never, I've never enjoyed my fishing so much as when I worked at Morrison's Nights. Yeah, so I hated it that much. I yeah. could not wait to go. Yeah, but yeah, like I, I, unless you've won the lottery, and you can enjoy it, like full time yeah. fishing. I've not. I've not personally came across a full-time angler that's fully content with life. Yeah. I've never met Terry, but 
from what I gather, he's got a nice life that he yeah. enjoys. Yeah. He's not financially struggling. So, like, yeah. that's his love. But a lot of the guys that have got five nights a week, yeah. that, that's... I don't know if that door's not shut again. Just, not. just slam it quickly. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's it's existing. Yeah. Everyone does everything yeah. through choice, yeah, don't yeah, they? But, yeah, I, yeah. I, do, I do fish as much as I can. I generally fish in the summer. Yeah. That's when spring's normally a write-off because... The good weather conditions, my Means phone's on meltdown. Busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, you know, yeah. if if like the moon's bang on and and the big weather fronts coming in, I don't even think about fishing. Yeah, because you know you'll be taking. Because pictures. I know what's going to happen. Yeah. I know where <laughs> all of our main lads are fishing. I know yeah. when they're catching them. Their bite times. They they let me. They keep, I always ask them to keep me updated so I can prepare. You know, yeah. if, I know if Oz is getting bites at, in the evening, and such such as getting bites in the morning, I'll try and. Right. Work mode sort of to do stuff to, yeah. Um, or, you know, I might, if I've got to do something in the area, I'll go down the night before and fish. Or, right. um, but it's the summer that I'll tend to do more fishing because the lake's quite. A, um, I think the fish are a lot easier to catch. Yeah. Um, I'm not as on call. Yeah. Um, See, so yeah, I, I I tend to fish in the summer, but it's I've always picked the last few years. I've picked. I fished on Elstow, which was perfect for me because it was I could keep my my gear in the back of the van. If I finish early, or whatever I can go. I go Elstow. Mm -hmm. I go there. I knew wherever the fish were, where I could, where they'd end up in the morning. Yeah. I put my bait out in the morning, get a few bites, and go. Yeah. Whereas now the lake I'm fishing, it's it's boats. You, you, they don't really show until night, so you've got to. You kind of need a couple of nights to yeah. suss it out, um, particularly in the spring. So the summer allows you to bait and do things where you can sort of get them to you and you can work out what's going on without having to be there. Yeah. So yeah, I tend to fish more in the summer than summer and a bit of autumn and I don't even entertain winter. Yeah. I hate the winter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's similar with me with my line of work I'm in the heating industry so yeah. winter's flat out anyway yeah, yeah perfect so it's, it does work out nicely for the fishing obviously you tend yeah. to tail off in the spring a bit as it warms up yeah so it does work out quite nice I should probably take it river fish system because it is quieter for us in the winter yeah but I've just never really yeah never really done it um, yeah no. so if we hit pause we'll um have a coffee and then go on to some questions yeah I was asked what's it like working with so many different anglers with different styles we sort of touched on that, mm. one, I suppose, already. But. Yeah, well, it's, it's it's great fun. You get to go to loads of different places, from rivers to little lakes, big lakes. Um, yeah, and everyone fishes really differently, and it's it's really interesting because you 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 kind of like if something's really good, you want to put it in your own fishing, but then it can over over complicate yeah. things. So you might go out with you know someone and they're doing something you think oh that's great you know yeah. like <laughs> and then times out by five <laughs> yeah then then yeah then you then you, you go and do your own fish and you think oh, i'll do that but then you go no 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 no, don't just like do your own <laughs> yeah. there are certain things like i remember miles a few years ago was in the summer was like putting a phenomenal amount of parkland and yeah i've always fished particle but that kind of volume i was like nah that's crazy but it, i put it in my own fish and then it was amazing yeah um you know, like a hook pattern on a rig, for example, might see a hook hold or or something like that, and think, yeah, that's, that's yeah, that, that that works better. You know, and yeah, it's it's, it's really interesting and to see how people approach things. Some people are night hawks, some people are dawn watchers, mm. some people are tight lines, some are slack, some are braid mm. users, some are, and you, and you you see loads of different. There's no right or wrong, you know, yeah. like. You Some think if you, if you tried to take all of that on board, you wouldn't get the rods out, would you? You'd have, you'd have <laughs> you'd get three, no sleep. <laughs> yeah, you'd have one on a zig, one on a pop-up, one on a solid bag in the edge, and then you change around. It, it's, it, there's so many different ways of catching fish. I've like just sort of looked at it now and go, like, the easiest way for me has always been, like, find the best. I think going out with Steve Cliff, I mean, I've been friends with him for a long time, actually going out and doing features and stuff with him, was really interesting because like you know you'd always find a spot put two rods on it and you'd fi find another spot for your third and he is literally dissect the swim because mm -hmm. people say markers are carp scarers i just genuinely don't believe that at all especially on yeah. like busier lakes they know what a marker float is 
um, but find that absolute sweet spot mm -hmm. that is just goes down so great and you can put free on it and then you put your bait out and you sit there and you know that if anything arrives you've got mm -hmm. and, ha and that that watching him do that was like that was probably the biggest influence in my fishing where I thought yeah it's ideal yeah. and it works um, you know, and you can you can tweak around with your rigs and hook baits, for example. But yeah, yeah, that, that and it's so so simple to be able to just find that sweet spot, then throw it night as opposed to find a spot there, find a spot there, and um, but yeah, going out with different people is always great fun. Everyone's different characters as well, you know. Like just because they all use sticky baits doesn't mean if they're all in the same room they'd be mates. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're all very different people. You know, like, Nick's a very different person to. I don't know, someone that's really quiet and reserved and um, a few are strong characters. Mm. You know, you put a lot of alpha males in a room, they'll yeah. probably clash or... Yeah, competing for... So I'd be quite selective when it comes to shows of picking who's going because, yeah, you get a lot of alphas in one <laughs> yeah. room, it's yeah. difficult. But, yeah, they're all great. I get on with... The main thing, every one of them that I get on with, I couldn't... I wouldn't have someone on board I didn't get on with or mm. couldn't work with. You know, I get on with all of them. Some are easier to work with than others, but it, they're all great in their own way. Yeah, you know? yeah brilliant. Yeah, how, how many guys have you got on? Do you know? Yeah. God, uh, <laughs> I think we. I'm, I think we've got like twenty five consultants, right? Something like that. Um, and now we're thinking anglers. It's kind of opened up a whole new. Yeah. I mean, generally, a lot of them are using both, which makes it easier. But yeah, I'm sure we've got like twenty five anglers or something now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good. Okay, brilliant. So if we go on to another question, again, we've sort of covered this, but we can probably expand a little bit more. And Dave Hill asks, so what was the inspiration originally for Reflections? Sort of how did you go about putting each one together, the ideas for it? I think uh, the inspiration was to try and put out cart films that aren't product heavy. Mm -hmm. um, just fishing films that no matter what, company you follow you're a social whatever you can just watch it's, it was about trying to make people want to go fishing yeah what you know watch it and be like oh my god I can't wait to go mm. um, putting together the sections is hard um, wanted people that were engaging you know, you could watch easily good on camera venues that are nice um, different nice carp um Places that people would like dream to go, like Cassian, for example. Yeah. It's like the, the I've always seen it's like the mecca of Europe, if you yeah. like. Um, so yeah, going to like somewhere like Cassian. You know, like when we spoke about Mitch earlier, but he, his poor missus must have watched that film about twenty times. He's like, I want to go. I'm going. <laughs> it's mega. Like, it, th that's the whole idea of it is to try and just go like shoot something that's at places that are really hard that others wouldn't necessarily attempt um with a not a minimum budget but as le you know spending as yeah. least amount of it was two weeks out there for example we'd have a much better chance of catching but you know you've got your expense of that is a lot higher than yeah so trying to keep the expense down while but generally a lot of them have got something going on to like reflections free for example yeah kind of already planned it all out anyway um then there'll be things that happen that will get added in. So like yeah. Mitch with a croc was never really planned, but mm -hmm. it's one of the best mirrors in the country. Mm. I filmed it. We never did anything with it. It was like, you know, Mitch has got quite an interesting job. Yeah. Um, let's do something. You know, like it's different. People don't, they know, they know that they eat their boilies and are a pain in the ass. but what is the, yeah. what are crayfish all about? Um, and yeah, uh, it was difficult because we wanted to try and really I me mean, fishes all sorts of things to combat them but it, yeah. again didn't want to go down the tactic route as such yeah um so yeah reflections three yeah is already planned out um yeah and we're just i think trying to use our names if you know, the big following mm. people um and again, it's getting it's going to get harder and harder every year. Now to try yeah. and find that lake, that fish, the yeah original content. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it's getting harder. But I think yeah, for how it's going so far, like we've already got fish to fifty-one pound on camera. So right, um, that hasn't 
been filmed, mm-hmm. so I believe. It's not one that's known across you know, the, the grapevine, if you like. So, yeah, we've already got and another one, 45 pounder, which again is only known by the guys in the know, if you like. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think yeah, three is going quite well so far. Brilliant. And are you obviously with that? So, f- do you take the best bits from two and look to expand on them? Would you have you? Did you already? Were you well into filming three before two was released? Uh, no, we've we've. I didn't start planning three until about three weeks ago. I had a rough right. idea, right? But actually, planning three dates and everything, which is bad really, because springs the <laughs> springs a good time to get at least something in the bag. Mm. But kind of just let it happen. Um, yeah. have a provisional plan like last year's plan was changed I mean we ended up putting Oz in through the data disaster yeah but it ended up being something that a lot of people enjoyed yeah so yeah like because in essence that film really only had, it had a couple of 30 pounders in but yeah, you don't need loads of big ones but no. as long as the story's there yeah as long as something's interesting there but I've we got lucky last year with Nick catching that blockbuster fish. We got lucky mm. in the sense that Martin allowed us, well, helped us get Chris on film, which is something that doesn't really happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this year we've 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 got um, Adam Penning definitely doing something, Scott Lloyd definitely doing something, Miles Gibson, um, Martin again, mm-hmm. Nick again, um, got Renyard, and. There is another one. Um, Marcus and Gaz. Marcus right. and Gaz, in, um, they, we're going abroad. Try yeah. and do one abroad, one a year if we can. Yeah. Um, it does have a, a following. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, try and do one one abroad a year. Brilliant. But, again, trying to be different to, you know, we wouldn't want to do something like what, what Alan and Ollie do. Mm. That's what they do. And yeah. So it's more of like the adventure, but you know, park yourself there for a few days, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Is this your dream job? I guess so. Yeah, I kind of like fell into it, really. I kind yeah. of, uh, I was, yeah, I was working at Morrison's and just literally did it so I could go fishing. I worked the weekend so that I could go fishing at a good time. Never really knew what I wanted to do with myself, life wise. I just wanted to enjoy it. I never, mm-hmm. I was never ambitious or wanted loads of money or anything like that. I just wanted just to enjoy myself. Um, yeah. And then, I, uh, yeah, nights was killing me. Yeah, like, I used to work nights. Yeah, it's like, horrible. You turn into a different yeah. person, antisocial. Yeah, it's not good for you as well because it messes up your psyche. Yeah, rhythm especially up. when you have your days off and you, yeah. you know, I'd I'd finish my night shift and if I was absolutely buzzing for it, I'd drive straight. I was fishing horseshoe at the time. Oh, yeah. I'd yeah. drive straight to horseshoe, yeah. um, find fish, get a swim, whatever, <laughs> flick them out and go sleep for a few yeah. hours, or I'd go home, have a few hours sleep, and then go a bit more fresh. Mm-hmm. But then when you finish your session, you know, you'd leave at like two in the afternoon you don't want to sleep before you go so you end up just going all the way through it's horrendous so yeah Yeah, it's a horrible feeling that awful and then um, yeah I I, I think there was a job at DHP right I applied for it ended up getting it worked at DHP really Mm. enjoyed um, if anyone doesn't know what DHP is it's Total Carp and what was Advanced Carp yeah Um, worked there for four years I think it was Um, sort of doing like journalism really and yeah. then uh, yeah I enjoyed it but it was like Monday to Friday 9 to 5 I've never fished so little in my life but yeah. I, I think I had a my girlfriend at the time wasn't very understanding so right. I was a bit whipped I suppose <laughs> um, uh, and yeah then I got I actually rang Tom from Sticky for just some product for the tackle pages and he yeah. was like oh I wanted to have a conversation with you and then it sort of went from there Brilliant. Took a, I mean, when I went up there, it was like a tiny little unit. I think they're rolling like 120 kilos of bait a, a day. Right. Um, there was like seven staff, I believe, and he yeah. was like, I, "I want this to be a giant." And I'm like, "He, he seems pretty keen, this bloke." Yeah. Like he, he knew what he was talking about with bait. He sort of bought it off yeah. someone else. Yeah. It was only ever known for its pellets, and right. at the time they were testing the krill, mm-hmm. um, and it was to be launched. I think a few weeks after I started, but um, yeah, six years down the line, I think there's like 55 staff now. <laughs> wow. I think we're rolling like 2.9 ton of bait a day, and <laughs> it's 
it's turned into a monster. Yeah. Um, but it's always been great. It's like it's never been like a corporate company. Yeah. You know, it's always yeah. been there's like there's no like who's your direct manager, who's your line. Manager. It's none yeah. of that. It's literally like Arthur, you're in charge of production. Mm -hmm. Dan, you do the media. Like that's yeah. everyone just cracks on. Yeah. No well, one. You can, it comes across, I think, that way from the outside. Yeah, you, you get that feel. It's very very laid back. No yeah. of us ever moan about how much work we've got to do. I'll yeah. never. I'll never say I'm working at a weekend. Or whatever. We just crack. It's 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 literally like passion now. Yeah. Every, like it, my life is in growth. I went to New Zealand a few years ago for my best mate's wedding, and yeah. You no, know, I took my computer with me. No, I didn't have. It's just didn't have to, but I know yeah. that I want to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's not a. I don't ever wake up and think, oh, I got to go to work today, yeah. which I guess is the dream, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. When yeah, when they say that, don't they? Um, did in terms of obviously the photography, have you always been into that, or is that something you? No, up? I never, I never give a toss about photography. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, my pictures, I didn't care what they looked like. It was just like hold it. I mean, I look at my pictures when I was younger; and they were terrible. Yeah. Um, I think when Jake, my brother, won the junior uh, carp championships, hmm. two thousand and I don't know seven, eight, something like that, and um, yeah. Lewis Porter was editor of Crafty Carper at the time, and he suggested that he should buy a new camera, an SLR. Right. And when he texted, when he rang Jake, said he needed an SLR, he put the phone down. Jake was like, "You want an SLR?" I was like, "What the hell's that?" And neither of us knew what it was. Let's yeah. Google it. Um, <laughs> and he got one with a little kit lens, and we thought it was great. We're like, "Oh, wow, this is amazing!" But and I think I got a little fudgy, hundred and twenty quid jobby. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was never really into it. And then obviously I went into DHP, and then it was all about pictures. Yeah. But what I learned at DHP changed again at Sticky because we shot magazine style. Right. Everything nicely exposed, like high f stops, all very magazine friendly. Mm -hmm. And then Tom was like, "Fish pictures, fixed lens, low f stop." Yeah. It was a new world then, and yeah. I don't think it was really that popular at the time. Yeah. Um, and now it's everywhere. Yeah. But at the time, no one was really doing it. And our Instagram page, our social media, he was so anal about what went up. The fish shot had to be right. You know, the, if it what, if it was a rubbish photo, it doesn't matter what fish it was. No, because it's all about like, the image yeah. of it. You know, it's like yeah. so. Yeah, it was like everything was shot on fixed lens, and yeah, it's kind of gone from there. Then I kind of like, I guess just uh, learnt for experience, and now I'd, yeah, I don't I don't edit. I've never edited a photo. Right. Maybe the odd time, like say for Instagram, you might throw it in like your Lightroom up or something just to get the yeah. contrast right, or whatever. But generally, I try and take a picture how I want it yeah. to end up. Um, I know now you can sort of like throw it in raw and do anything you want when you get home, but yeah. I don't really have time to sit there yeah. editing loads of photos. You know, I'd, I'd quite rack them. You know, yeah. if I'm doing a fish, I'm racking them. Yeah. You know, it's like um, because you get a certain angle of the mouth, you get the angle yeah. of doing a certain expression, you might have the horizon wrong, you might. Whatever's going on, yeah. you'll get that money shot if yeah, you rack them. It. Yeah, like I'll yeah. I'll come away from photographing a carp and I might have three hundred pictures. Mm. And here's a faff going through them. You just like toggle through and go through, and all of a sudden one will just go boom. Yeah, jump out. Yeah, like yeah. his dorsal might go up, his mouth yeah. might hoop over, his tail. You know, sometimes their tail might bend round. Yeah, yeah. And if you take twenty shots, every shot with the tail bent round, you're like, oh, what a shame. Yeah. Whereas if you just rack them and rack them and rack them, you'll get yeah. that money shot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just all I got taught. My main thing I got taught at DHP was throw it in manual, right. and you do it. Yeah. Don't like a lot of people say. Oh yeah, AV sweet. AV is sweet. I think for like nine ninety percent of the time. Yeah. But if you live in Yateley, it's yeah. a waste of time. Yeah. You know, I remember photographing a fish for uh, for Marcus Snubnose from Car Park. Right. And you know Yateley's very enclosed with trees. It's yeah. dark. Even it's always dull and gloomy. Yeah. Um. And if you have an AV, it's like, I'm taking the phone, and all I can hear is, yeah. I'm like, that's out of focus, that's out of focus. Yeah. Yeah. Your camera <laughs> is it doesn't realise that you're a moving object, you're photographing a mo two moving yeah. objects, yeah. you know? So if your shutter speed is low, your, your, your fish is blurred. Yeah. That's why I always like, say to the lads, manual. Go manual, yeah. don't go below 100 shutter speed yeah. for safety. Yeah. Your ISO is your emergency setting, yeah. and it freaks people out the the camera settings. But it's really easy. When I was going to say that, and it would just suddenly click, wouldn't it? I when you like that. when you break it down, you you keep your f stop the same. I'll go three point two. If it's a really long or big carp, I might go four or higher. Yeah. 
What well, talk us through that? What's your your reason? So if you, the the lower you go with it, you'll get more blur. It's all nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. And on your camera screen, you'll think, oh, it's banging. If you put it on your computer, the head's out of focus, the yeah. tail's out of focus, the centre of it's fine, but everything's too yeah. soft. Yeah. Whereas with the blur, go 3.2 and make sure you've got a good distance. It's always been a thing where you throw the mat next to the closest bush, mm. bang next to it. There's no depth there. Right. You come as far away from that bush as you dare yeah. without getting the sky involved. Yeah. And there's your depth. Mm -hmm. Then you can go up a bit higher in your f-stop to get that blur and retain that sharpness. Yeah, and um, you, you can't go too low because then the person's face is all... Yeah, exactly. And it all depends on how they hold it. You know, yeah, some, out there or in If here. someone's crouched down with it, you know, their elbows on their knees holding it out, yeah. then it's different to someone that does the sort of like by their body yeah. pose. You know, yeah, you, that you, foot, foot and a half difference is massive. Yeah, huge. And yeah, I just keep my f stop the same, change it depending on the fish or the angler. But yeah, everything's on shutter speed. If like to me, if it's bright sunshine, perfect. She can wrap the shutter speed right up. Yeah. You know, ISO is on a hundred unless you need it for an emergency. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's all you need to really remember. It's yeah. not. It's not. Um. It sounds daunting, and I, if I give my camera to someone, they're <laughs> like, "Oh my god." Yeah. Like, mate, it's fine. <laughs> Just yeah. press. Like yeah. that button there, I've it'll that bleep, yeah. Yeah. and then just press it and it'll take a photo. <laughs> if it's too dark, go right on that top wheel. Yeah. If it's too light, go left. <laughs> it's amazing how people still get it wrong there. <laughs> on <some> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. And like yeah. framing and things, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, c come, I think the main thing with photography now, because there's a lot of people with good cameras, mm -hmm. good lenses is probably more important than the camera, yeah. and understanding of it, but it's an eye for a picture. It's yeah. taking different... It's really hard now because so many people are taking good photos yeah but you know in terms of like people wanting to get sponsorship or whatever yeah you know it sounds bad to say it maybe but that is how you if you if you have if you take the first thing we look for is what's his picture like yeah which sounds bad but it's that's the what you know the image of the company is about nice fish and all. yeah but you can you get a bigger response on a nice fish nice photo mm -hmm. than a big fish that isn't so nice of a bad photo yeah you know and, and you think there's like you say there's so many photos out there as well mm. a good one just catches your eye and makes you stop whereas typically with Instagram it's just scroll scroll another, the, another, the nature so. of where we look at things now yeah it's that app. it's so quick and the yeah. only way you can stop them is a nice photo yeah it's the only way you can do it and what we're trying to do as a company is make people stop Mm -hmm. Haven't got a, if they want to read the how they've caught them, that's fine. But the main thing is they just go, wow, that's nice. Look up, sticky baits. That's it. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I think that no one really people don't read it. You know, if we say, I know we've got a competition. You can mm -hmm. win twenty kilos of bait. All you've got to do is da da da. Ninety percent of the questions would be, how do I win this? Yeah. They don't read it. Yeah. It's a picture. Competition. Yeah. Oh, how do I win this? Don't yeah. read it. No one reads anything. It's <laughs> yeah. it's everything's so, the, so quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, what sort of tips would you be able to give sort of people maybe just getting into us? You mentioned the good one about coming back off the bush a bit. Mm. What other things for that trophy shot or being a bit different? You must have a few tricks up your sleeve. <laughs> or is that uh, they remain? I think avoid sky unless it's beautiful and blue. Mm -hmm. A grey or a bright, damn bright skies where you can't see the cloud yeah. definition. You just see clap, horrible. Yeah, really, really horrible and hard. Hard to just go for even light. You want to get them, pick the most even light, whether it's dark light, or whatever. As long as it's even, mm -hmm. you can control any of your settings to to expose it. Yeah, um, yeah. Coming away a bit from the bush, um, ask the person that's taking the picture. Go for it, mate. Don't hold yeah. back. Don't just wait for that money shot. Rack them. Yeah. Just literally just do loads. Because quite often, like, a lifting one or yeah. whatever will end up being really nice. Yeah. You know? and it will, yeah. It's shots like that that will take you back to... I think a photo, the reason why I think photos are so important is it takes... I think the better the photo is, the more it takes you back yeah. to that I got, moment. That's so true. I um, A few months ago, I did a session on Christchurch, and the guy... Um, Reese turned up and had one. I think it was Ben's common at forty-one, and some of those better shots yep. were of him just about to hoist it, yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than actually holding it up. Definitely, and you'll get like the width of the cart maybe yeah. in a one or yeah, 
things that you wouldn't normally see. I think that's the that's the key. Like the ones that I look at that I've taken mm. are always ones I've just gambled on. Yeah, you know, I might I might be in the water and you know have my camera. I haven't got a flip screen, but mm -hmm. you know have it down and just guess. Yeah, you know, I might just, rack, no, just, just go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it. As he's just I'm like, lift, 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 lift. Now as they're lifting it up, yeah, I'm just racking them. Yeah, and sometimes you're like, yes. Yeah. Other times you think, oh, it's terrible. Yeah. But you just got to gamble and just go for yeah. it. That's the beauty of it, I suppose, with digital rather than film. You can do that. Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, that. I mean, I've probably got 3,000 images set on my card now. Don't, yeah. need, don't need to, but it's just, I just take loads of photos and yeah. you'll always get the odd different one. But um, the, the main thing, with, I think, is picking the right lens to your camera body as well. Yeah. And a good lens. Your lens is more important than your camera. Yeah, that's going to be my next question. Talking yeah. about the kit side of yeah, things. Yeah, I, th I think, um, I mean, a lot of, I used to use, what did I used to use? A 60D yeah. and a Sigma 30. Or th I think it was, yeah, Sigma 30 or 35. I'm sure it was a 30. Right. Um, yeah, I used it for everything. And then went full frame to a 5D Mark III and then got a 50mm. Mm -hmm. So but if, if you've got a crop sensor camera, 30, 35. If you've got a full frame camera, 50mm. If you put a 50mm on a crop sensor, I always find that it, the fish looks tiny. Yeah. Um, equally, if you put a 35 on a full frame, it like looks like something from a board joint up here. They really hold them out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, ma match your lens to your camera. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I use Sigma lenses. Mm -hmm. I have done for six years. And I, I, I love them. Yeah. Absolutely love them. Yeah, I've got a friend that actually works for him. Right. And um, I've always said to friends, oh, yeah, mate, I've got a friend. He, he must have sorted 100 lenses out now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of people say, like, oh, I want photos. Like, uh, it's still, just because you've got a good camera and a good lens, it doesn't mean it's going to give you what yeah. you really want. You have to understand your settings. Yeah, you know, if, if there's a, like, we've got some Canadian geese next to us. Yeah. Go out. Take some pictures of the Canadians, change your settings, change your f-stops, understand why it's giving you that, that blurred mm -hmm. effect, why is it overexposing it, you know. Yeah. Play around with it, practice, practice, everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, understanding your settings, get a nice lens, your camera body. I mean, I've always used Canons. Yeah. Um, I've used Nikons for other people and stuff, but I prefer Canons, I think they react faster. Mm -hmm. You can like that racking effect, you know, you can rack them. The other day I used Aussies when we was doing a picture of a fishing. I was like, come on, hurry up, hurry yeah. up, hurry up. It's not, yeah, it's not reacting second. fast enough. It's but, massive, isn't it? If someone's yeah. lifting or, or the shots with the waves would be a perfect example. Exactly, yeah. It's you're having that, you know, that's why one of the main reasons I prefer cans. Mm. I'm used to it, it's like I, I don't need to look at the camera. Yeah, My fingers know where know. they're going. Yeah. Yeah. Um But yeah, practice with it, get a good lens and understand your camera, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. it's I mean you can pick sixty Ds at for hundred and fifty quid. Yeah. You can pick a 35 mil Sigma for second hand 150 quid. Yeah. You've got a camera and a lens there that can give you a good a picture as you're ever going to get yeah. if you use it correctly. The problem yeah. is you can practice as much as you want, but you're not taking the picture of your fish. Yeah, that's so the thing. That's the problem. So you've got to try and... If you understand the camera as much as you need to, you'll be able to explain to that you're person to a point from, yeah. that can give you the shot that you want. Yeah. You know, like, which is tricky, you know. I, I, I always just accept that I'm never going to get the picture that I would give someone else to me. Yeah, yeah. The only time I've really had it was actually my girlfriend the other week. She did a great job. I was right. like, how have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> the way she's, like, bent down all yeah, weird. And yeah. I was like, what are you doing? This is going to be awful. But they're actually yeah. really good. Brilliant. I suppose, yeah, over time you'll know exactly where that person needs to be with your camera yeah. or with that lens on. Yeah, and how much they're moving as well, like, like yeah. steady, like... yeah. Yeah, being as as still as possible. Yeah, it, yeah, the, it's all about sharpness, and you know, and the cameraman's got to be still as possible. You're mm -hmm. trying to be as still as possible with a fish, and yeah. that's what I say about the shutter speed. It has to be at a certain. If you start going below a hundred, you're risking it. Yeah, you know, because any slight movement is just gonna. Yeah, because the lower the shutter is, it's the more light it's letting in. Mm -hmm. But if it, you can always hear when someone's taking a photo, and it goes, yeah, and you're like, oh my god, no, yeah. That, that's blurred. Be, yeah, not going to be sharp. What about self takes? 
Yeah. Wrong person. I literally, I've never <laughs> taken a self take in my life. No. I, if I catch a carp, no matter how big it is, I take a picture of it on the map. Yeah. I just never really, I've never um, got enough, myself set it? up for it. Yeah. It's, I'm normally fishing with other people, other people are near me so I can go and grab them for a photo. But if I'm on my own, then yeah, I've quite often, I've, I've had a few failed self attempt, like attempts at it, but yeah. I don't really always take my camera. If I go fishing, it might be in the van or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I wouldn't be. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I need. I do need to set myself up self takes, but mm. yeah, I've never really, yeah. never really done it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We've got an hour and ten minutes. I think we'll wrap up there, Dan. Yeah. Dan Marble, thank you very much. Thank you.